Today we will be watching a video on multiplying decimals. When we're multiplying decimals, it's a lot like multiplying whole numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to show you how to multiply the two numbers 23 times 14, and then we're going to put some decimals in that same problem and show you how it's going to look a little bit different. So if we were doing 23 times 14, 3 times 4 is 12, carry up the 1, 4 times 2 is 8, 1 more is 9, put down our 0, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, and add those quantities together. So we'd have 322 as our total for multiplying 23 times 14, the product or the answer is 322. Now we're going to do that same problem, but this time there are decimals in the problem. So we're going to multiply 2 times 3 times 1.4. When we start, we're originally just going to multiply as if those decimals weren't there. So we're still going to do 4 times 3 is 12, carry up the 1, 4 times 2 is 8, 1 more is 9, put down our 0 as our placeholder, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, and add, just like we did in the original problem. The only difference is, is now we need to count how many digits are behind or to the right of the decimal place in the problem. So let me just grab a different color here. So we see that the three is behind the decimal place and the four is behind the decimal place. So that would mean that we have two digits behind the decimal. So we're going to count in two places from the end and put our decimal there. So our answer to this problem would be 3.22. So what you need to do is you need to count how many digits are behind the decimal place or to the right of the decimal place and that many digits need to be behind or to the right of the decimal in your answer. What you're going to do now is some more practice with this traditional method of multiplying decimals. So if you could copy down these three problems on a piece of, piece of paper and work them out, remember no calculator allowed, and do remember that in the second problem and the third problem there's a negative involved, so you need to remember to use those rules as well. Come back in just a few minutes or unpause the video when you are ready to go through the answers. All right, so now I'm going to go through and show you the work for these problems. Um, when we're multiplying 6.5 times 4.7, we would have 7 times 5 is 35, carry up the 3, 7 times 6 is 42, and 3 more is 45. Put down the 0. Then we're going to multiply 4 times 5 is 20, carry up our 2, 6 times 4 is 24, and 2 more is 26 and then add those together to get third, 3055. Then we have to figure out where to put the decimal place. Because we have two numbers behind the decimal in the problem, we're going to have two numbers behind the decimal in the answer. So our answer is going to be 30.55. Okay, let's try the next one. The next one um, also includes a negative, so now we have negative 3.8 times 4.4. So again, we're just going to start by multiplying as if those decimals weren't there. 8 times 4 is 32, so we're going to put down the 2, carry up the 3. 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 more is 15. Put down the 0. 4 times 8 is 32. Oops. And then 4 times 3 is 12, and 3 more is 15. And then we add those quantities together. And then because we were multiplying a positive times a negative, our answer is going to be negative. And then we need to figure out where to place the decimal. We have two numbers behind the decimal place, so we need two numbers behind the decimal place in our answer. So our, our answer is going to be negative 16.72. 
The last problem with this practice is 5.79 times negative 0.8. So again, we're working with one negative in our multiplication problem. And we're going to start just by multiplying like normal, as if those decimal places were not there. So 9 times 8 is 72. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 7 more is 63. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 6 is 46. And then we need to figure out where to put our decimal place as well as whether our answer should be positive or negative. So let's start with um, whether our answer should be positive or negative. We're multiplying a positive times a negative, so our answer should be negative. And then we have one, two, three numbers behind the decimal in the problem. So we need to have three numbers behind the decimal in the answer. So our answer would be negative 4.632. Hopefully you were able to get all of those answers. Another way to multiply decimals is through the use of a generic rectangle. In this example, we're going to be multiplying 5.3 times 2.4. In order to use the generic rectangle, you need to separate the whole number and the decimal. And then we're going to do the same thing with 2.4. We're going to put 2 and then 0.4, and then in between each one of these we're going to put the plus sign, because if I add 2 plus 0.4 I get 2.4, and if I add 5 plus 0.3 I get 5.3. So then in the generic rectangle I just multiply, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 0.4, I'm just going to write down the 20, and then I know I need one number behind the decimal place, so really that's a 2. 0.3 times 2 would be 0.6, and 0.3 times 0.4 would be 0.12. Then in order to find the answer for this generic rectangle problem, I would take 10 plus 2 plus 0.6 plus 0.12. And if I add those quantities together, I get 12.12. Seven, six. Now this is just another strategy that you can use if the traditional method seems confusing to you. It's just, this is another way to look at doing that type of a problem. Here's another example of multiplying using the generic rectangle, except this time we have a negative included in the numbers that we're multiplying together. So when we're multiplying by a negative decimal, we need to make sure that we include the negative not only with the whole number, but also with any other number in that decimal. So for example, if we're splitting up negative 7.2 to put onto the generic rectangle, we would have negative 7 plus negative 0.2. Then we would multiply that by 4 plus 0.3. Since that one's positive, we don't have to do anything with signs. Then we're just going to go ahead and multiply within the generic rectangle. So negative 7 times 4 is negative 28. Negative 0.2 times 4 is negative 0 0.8. 0 0.3 times negative 7 would be negative 2.1 and 0.3 times negative 0.2 would be a negative 0.06. Then remember, after we've multiplied in the generic rectangle, all we have to do is add together those quantities. So we have negative 28 plus negative 2.1 plus negative 0.8 plus negative 0 0.06. And if you add those four digits together, you'll get negative 30.96. Again, this is the same answer that you would get if you use the traditional method to solve, um, just another visual way to solve the problem.